How many of us want the Lord to send us? Amen. Yes. Send us to the brokenhearted. Send us to those that are in need. Yes. Amen. But we can't do it in our own strength. We need to do it with the Holy, Spout, the Holy Spirit that pushes us and elevates us and speaks through us. Yes. Amen. Amen. So today, uh, I don't plan to be before you long. I, I've really been thinking about this uh, message for a while. And then I was able to, uh, to do it because I, I thought I had a... a uh, a break. I don't want to say a break, but I thought I had another week before I had to get ready. Um, amen. So, uh, and then Sister Stewart on yesterday, she said, oh, won't you just uh, use a message that you used before? Amen. And, I, and I'd been thinking about this for a while. Um, let's just get through the scripture part. Once again, I thank God for our pastor in 38 years, amen. Minister uh, Stewart, amen. all the ministers, apostles, and elders in the church, and the lay people as well on today. We thank you for being in the house of God today. If you can turn with me to Luke chapter 10, this is a very, very familiar scripture to anybody that's been at Restoration. If you don't know this scripture by heart, uh, I don't think you was paying attention. Um, the many times we heard this scripture, amen, Luke chapter 10, and I want to uh, um, start reading at um, verse 37, I mean 25. And I want to read 25 through, uh, 27 to 37 for your hearing on today. Amen. And, uh, and he answered, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. But he willingly to justify himself said unto Jesus and this is a lawyer here disputing Jesus here coming at him um, but he will willing, willingly to justify himself said unto Jesus and who is my neighbor Jesus answering said a certain man went down from Jerusalem and uh, to Jer Jer Jerusalem to Jericho and fell amongst thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half did. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And remember that. And by chance there came down a certain priest, amen, that way, and when he saw him, that was saw the man in distress, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, amen, when he saw, <laughs> and likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And when he, and when, I'm sorry, and went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring, pouring in oil and wine and setting him on his own beast, and brought him to an end and took care of him. And on tomorrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, glory to God, whatever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now which, which now of these three thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell amongst the thieves. And he said, he that showeth mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, and what he said to each and every one of us today, go and do thou likewise. Amen. Go and do thou likewise. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We pray that something will say to bless us and encourage us to continue traveling down this road with you. I decrease that you may increase, and I pray that your word will just bring us all, oh God, some strength, some glory, and just, oh God, uh, a passion to just go after you like never before, to carry your word, not just to our people we know and people that we come in contact with, but even to the unlovables, even to those that we don't even know but come across our path. Oh God, use us, oh God, to share your word with the lost, not just with those that we know, but increasingly with those that we don't know. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. 
And as stated, this uh, message I spoke uh, during COVID. Uh, at that time, the message was, who, who is my neighbor? And uh, I was, I think at that time, we was not in the church when I spoke this message. We were, uh, um, had the restrictions in, so we couldn't even gather in the church. So this was one of the messages that was uh, broadcast, uh, amen, through one of the, the uh, platforms that we had at the time. And it all stemmed, um, as I shared then, from a message that I got in an email, amen, and a phone call from a co-worker at the time. And that co-worker, it was during the height of the, um, the riot and all the, um, the burning of buildings and statues and all those things that was happening during uh, 2020 at that time. And this particular uh, lady um, from Richmond emailed me and said, um, I have a problem, but first she asked, how was I doing? And then she says, I'm praying for you. This is in an email. I'm praying for you and your family. And this is what got me. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm praying for you and your family during this time. Mm -hmm. And that letter always stuck with me because she didn't have to write that or say that. Mm -hmm. She didn't have to have compassion. She just, it was coming from a Caucasian lady that took the time to write me and says, and then she says, I'm praying for you you and your family be encouraged. Mm -hmm. And then when I finally caught up with her to take care of her problem, she told me why she wrote that email. And that email was written because I came across her heart and she thought about all the turmoil that was going on and she put herself in my shoes mm -hmm. and wanted to, uh, she couldn't, she said it the right way. I could never feel what you feel, but all I can do is have compassion for what you're going through at this time. Mm -hmm. And that always stuck with me how this particular lady could not, didn't have to do what she did. But that day, I was blessed because someone took the time to send an email to encourage me and say that I'm praying for you. I have compassion for you and your family. And I could never, ever feel what you are going through per se. But I'm praying that God will help and see you through this. That blessed me. And we spoke a message about that uh, back in 2020. Amen. And I said that earlier that if you have been in restoration over the years, Overseer spoke about this message all the time. And he always talked about, which I'm going to, I don't want to get ahead of myself. At the end of the message, I'm going to do something um, that's going to bless us. And this is the way I saw it in 2020, and it's the way I see it today. Amen. 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 Luke 10, 29 says, but he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And this is the lawyer who was asking Jesus this question in the scripture text. Amen. Uh, the question from the lawyer or the law expert, the, which is the religious law expert, in verses 25 through 29, the expert in the law wanted to test Jesus and possibly justify himself. His question, who is my neighbor, reflects a mindset focused on limits, how much, how far, and to whom um, should I love? Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Reflects a mindset focused on limits. How much, how far, and to whom should we love? Yeah. Many of us might relate to this. We seek to define boundaries around us. Yeah. Who deserves our kindness? Who yeah. deserves our, uh, our generosity? Who deserves, amen, our love? Yeah. Amen? We set up boundaries as well, and you don't even realize that you're setting up boundaries because we walk by just like the priest and the Levite. We walk by people each and every day, and we see what they're going through. God places in our spirit to look at them and to have compassion on them, but we choose to set boundaries where they don't meet a certain need. Amen. They don't, they don't meet a certain requirement in our lives, so we walk right on by. They don't look like us. They don't talk like us. They don't dress like us. Yeah. Amen. They don't relate to us yeah. like we think they should. So we walk on by just like the priest and the Levite mm -hmm. because we have set up these boundaries, yeah. amen, yeah. that keep us yeah. from reaching the lost. And Matthew 5, 43 to 44 says, uh, this is where Jesus commands us to love our enemies. Uh, you have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. 
and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Amen. And this is Jesus, and he's commanding us to love our enemies. Amen. And at this time, many people are looking for the uh, political messages. The election is, is Tuesday. And I, uh, I determined in my heart that I would not go that route because that is unnecessary because we know who we're supposed to vote for. The Bible tells us to vote, amen, according to the Bible. So as believers, we know who to vote for. But now we must learn how to love because this election is going to cause a divide once again. And the only way that God's will and love is going to get out is through the believers. Amen. Because the hate is going to be so drastic on this Tuesday and Wednesday. Amen. That's coming up that that we're going to have to spread the love of God. Amen. And we're going to have to put aside political differences. We're going to have to put aside boundaries. Amen. amen. And we're going to have to care for each other and care for those in the world. Amen. So that's why I brought this scripture in. Amen. Because it's going to be people that we consider our enemies that really are not our enemies. It's the spirit within them, but they're not our enemies. Amen. We are to pray for them. Amen. And we're supposed to, amen, uh, 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 do things for them that will blow their mind and draw them to Christ. Amen. amen. And as we continue on, the response of the religious leaders in verses 30 to 32 says, once again, both the priests and the Levites saw the wounded man, amen, but passed by on the other side, despite their positions, amen, in the religious community. They chose to ignore the man's suffering. Sounds a lot like our world today. <laughs> where we see the flight of some of our people, not just our people. And many times we look at just what we call the black race, amen? But there's other races of people that are having just as much struggle as we are as well, amen? So we should not think that we're the only people that are having issues in life, amen? Yeah. There's many people of all races that are having the same marital problems, having the same yeah. drug problems, yeah. same alcohol problems, yeah. same, amen, depletion of the gospel it preached to them or talked to them, amen, yeah. the same, amen, level, amen, of, of disparity that we're facing, amen, same level of poverty that many are, ex are experiencing, amen. Yeah. But we just hear about a certain people flight, but it's across the board. It's not just one race that is struggling. There's many races of people that are struggling. Amen. That's why you have food banks. Amen. Not just in the inner cities, but food banks all over this world. In some of the richest neighborhoods, amen, during COVID and even after COVID, some of the biggest lines is the food pantry line when they drive up to get food for the week. Amen. So when you're looking for, amen, a beat up Pinto or a little wrecked down car, but you have people pulling up in Mercedes Benzes and Volvos, amen, and infinity trucks and everything getting food because, amen, it, it, it's not just a group of people that are experiencing this, but it's across the board. So your eyes are open when you see not just one race of people coming to get food, but you see all walks of life. Amen. You see people getting out with maybe a hundred thousand dollar ring on watches, all this stuff. Amen. The Gucci this, Gucci that and everything. But they in the same flight yeah. as other people. They in that line getting food just like yeah. the next person. Amen. Amen. So we as men and women of God, we should not look down on others because of where they're at. Regardless of their status. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It would be good to speak to someone who spoke English. It would be good to speak to someone that, that could understand you, dress like you, talk like you, look like you. But how many know that God is called for those that don't look the part? Amen. That don't talk the part. Amen. So that's what I've been finding out. Like we've been looking, looking for the right person to, to minister to. Amen. And God saying the harvest is right already. Amen. And, and, and we must have compassion on those. Amen. So we must, with the eyes of the Lord, see the harvest that is right in front of us. Amen. So we shouldn't be waiting till next October for harvest. Jesus is saying every day is an opportunity to reap a harvest yes, yes. on your job, in your family, in the grocery store, byways, highways, wherever you go, there's an opportunity 
to win somebody to Christ. So regardless of your position, amen, that's like me saying, you know, I put on a collar and I go out the house looking, trying to say I look nice or whatever, but yet don't give to the poor. Don't tell my neighbor I love them. Don't share the gospel with nobody. As we call, when I grew up, we just called those people, people that were fronting. And what fronting meant, there were people that were phonies. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? Yes. So God doesn't have time for phonies. Yes. Amen? Yes. Where we dress the part, but our life don't reflect uh-huh. how we dress. Yes. Amen? And Pastor brought a message about that recently, yes. you know, about our dress. Yes. You know? We're dressed in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. When we dress like that, man, we talk like God. We, t- we, we minister like God. Amen. We share the things of God because the light that's in us is what reflects out. So regardless if I have on a collar or don't have on a collar or without a title or with a title, they should know that we are men and women of God. Amen. That's, that's such a blessing when your neighbor can say that is a man or woman of God. And how we were introduced to the new neighbors that, that moved in across the street from us. Uh, Steve mentioned us as, oh, that's a pastor and that's his wife. And they go to church every Sunday. <laughs> that's how we were introduced to the neighbor directly across from us that just moved in. And it blew my mind. It shocked me that he would say that, yeah, that's a man and woman of God. They go to church on Sundays. And we never had a problem with them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you want to be known. Yeah. The love of Christ got to come up out of us. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. So we don't want to be, once again, like the Levite and like the priest, that when we see issues of life and people needing help, we cross on the other side. Amen. But we are going to be the people full of the Holy Ghost, full of the fire and conviction. We will go into the fire with those that God sends us to. Amen. 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 Another uh, and that's another uh, point uh, in James two fourteen seventeen helps identify this point as well. Emphas- uh, James two fourteen to seventeen emphasizes the faith. Faith without action is dead. What doeth profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can his faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food. And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace. Be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which they are needful to the body. What doeth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Amen? Amen. So when people come into our life and we have an opportunity to bless them and care for them, this scripture is, is reminding us by faith we are to help them, yeah. amen, and not send them off, amen. That's like you have a, a steak dinner and someone says, I, oh, man, that steak looked good, and they haven't eaten in a week. It should be obvious that that steak is no longer yours, but now that steak is theirs, yeah. amen, because that's the faith that's necessary to win someone to Christ, amen, yeah. to meet a need, amen. See, I've learned over these years, especially now, that we can't fry the fish, before we catch the fish. Yes. Amen. So sometimes we got to meet the need. Yes. Amen. And as we meet the need, we're meeting the need and we lead them to Christ all at the same time. Yes. Amen. So while you're feeding somebody or while you're clothing somebody, you're giving them Jesus. And as you're giving them Jesus, they're going to want more of him. Amen. Yes. So I've learned that, look, we got to meet a need of some people. And as we meet the need of some people, then we can give them Jesus like never before. But we're giving them Jesus all along. Amen. Amen. So some of us waiting that you get them in church, you got to come to church. No, some people are going to be saved outside of this church. Amen. Some people are going to be saved, amen, on your job, amen, in your uh, job parking lot, in a grocery store parking lot, on the streets, amen. Someone will get saved, amen, yes. if your eyes begin to look at them with compassion and that the harvest is right now. Amen. 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 Verses 33 to 35. It's one of my favorites. It says uh, the Samaritans was, was, were despised by Jews, yet uh, the Samaritan saw the injured man and felt compassion. He took the time to care for him, 
using his own resources to provide for his needs. The application of this for us, the Samaritan compassion was costly, involving his time, his energy, and his finances. Our love for others often requires us to go beyond what is comfortable or convenient. 1 John 3, 17, 18 says, Teach us, teaches us that love is demonstrated through actions. But whosoever have uh, this world's good and see if his brother in need Shut up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Now, what I love about this scripture is simply this. You see, first the man stops and assists the gentleman. And then he just didn't leave him on the road. He just didn't leave him with a prayer and say, God bless you. You know, I'll be praying for you as I leave. The gentleman stopped, patched up his wounds. And then not only patched up his wounds and, and, and cared for him, but the Bible told us that he put him on his beast. And what that means is that he chose to walk while the injured man rode on the beast that was designed to carry him. Amen. So he gave up his beast. Amen. His donkey for the injured man to ride him into the inn while he walked. Now you say, what is that? What is that? That says a lot to me because sometimes, amen, you, we have to go beyond our, 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 our comfort zone. And what I mean by that is that the comfort would have been, amen, I'm not sure how I'm going to get you there. Let's wait for another guy to come with another horse. We can put you on your horse. But this man chose to walk and put the man, injured man on his horse or donkey yes. and walked him to the end. Yes. Not only did he walk him to the end, he put him in the end, and then he paid for the end and his comfort and told the innkeeper that whatever over what I'm going to give you, amen, if it's not enough, when I return, I'm going to repay you. Yes. Now, that's love. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's talking out your pocketbook, right? Yes. That's talking out your, out your Mercedes Benz. That's talking out your beautiful $100,000, $300,000 house, right? Yes. Because now it does not matter. Whatever, what matters is the soul of that individual that God wants to reach. Yes. So now your car don't mean anything. Now your, your check account don't mean anything. Amen. Your status in the world don't mean anything if we don't use that status and that financial money that God has given us to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Amen. So we see a good example of that with the Samaritan. And then in verse 37, which is go and do likewise. Jesus concludes the parable by instructing the law expert to follow the example of the Samaritan, challenging him to love, love practically and sacrificially. We too are called to go and do likewise. This is not just a suggestion, but it is a command. When we see a need, God calls us to step in with love and with action. John 13, 34 says, where Jesus commands us to love as he loved us, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I said this was going to be short. Because you must understand, the parable of the Good Samaritan was given to answer the evasive question of the lawyer. And that is, define your terms. This is an old trick of, that lawyers used to use and still use today that lawyers and debaters use. Instead of getting involved with abstract terms, Jesus presented a concrete case and the lawyer understood the point. We must not spiritualize this parable and turn it into just another story. The point is simply that our neighbor is anybody who is in need. Anybody whom we see and need help. The hero of the story is the Samaritan, caring for a Jew, the priest, and a Levite. Those professional religious leaders are not heroes at all. The question we must answer is not who is my neighbor, but to whom can I be a neighbor? Amen? 
Amen. Now, yesterday we saw this awesome skit, but the skit um, uh, blessed me yesterday. And, it, and as I was preparing and finalizing this and I came into the church, uh, the Lord says, if, if Dan is in the church, ask him to come up and ask Deacon. This is what I believe the spirit has told me. And I said, talking to Deacon Mark, if he can come as well. Now, overseer, he told us <laughs> whenever. You saw somebody in trouble or, or distress, amen? And when you see these two gentlemen here, you'll understand why I'm going this way. And I usually don't come out the pulpit because I got a bad back, but. Oh, man, I just walked in. What's wrong? Amen. 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 forget that example that that, that, that that the overseer gave us all those years ago. And he was a little bit more dramatic, you know. He, he was crawling on the ground. He had another person crawling on the ground and all this and that. But he said, I would not just go to one, but I would try to pick them both up at the same time. Amen. And close him. Are we willing to go the extra mile for someone different from us who is God calling us to see with new eyes and serve with new compassion? In the words of Jesus, may we go and do likewise, showing the world that God loves, God's love has no limits. Go and do likewise. Lord, I thank you for your 
for your word. Wow. Lord, I thank you for showing us what true compassion looks like. Open up our eyes to see those around us who need a touch of your love. Give us the courage to step out, even when it's uncomfortable. And use us to bring hope and healing to our neighbors. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 If you're watching this broadcast and you have not received Jesus Christ into your heart, you can receive him. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when you call upon that name, Jesus, and uh, you will be saved, as uh, the, the scripture is instructing us. So I encourage anyone that's watching this broadcast or in the church that have not accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior. You can repeat these words after me and the Bible tells us that you will be saved. Re uh, those that may be in a backslidden state, you also can repeat these words and we, God will welcome you back into his fold as well. You have not been kicked to the curve, but God still loves you and will welcome you back. Amen. Amen. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that you raised him back to life. I want to trust him as my savior, follow him as my Lord from this day forward. Guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen, if you just repeated that after me, the Bible tells us that you're now saved. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. The church here at Restoration are rejoicing for this new walk with Jesus Christ. Amen. If you would like to know more information, you can uh, visit us at rcfchurch.org, rcfchurch.org. Go to our email page and let us know that you got saved and we will get you out some information to help you with this walk with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So let's prepare.